The crimson sky boiled with rage, a brooding canopy of fire and fury unrelenting in its searing torment upon the land below. Billowing black clouds choked the heavens, shrouding the earth in dusky shadows. It was as if a thousand cruel stars had turned their nuclear fury upon the planet, scorching the atmosphere till it rippled and warped with otherworldly heat. On the surface, the once great works of humanity lay in ruins, toppled and broken under the relentless bombardment. Colossal skyscrapers that had once pierced the clouds now smoldered in rubble, great steel beams buckled and melted by the incomprehensible temperatures. Bridges and highways stretched into the distance, their proud engineering reduced to charred and twisted corpses. Dotted amongst the devastation, the skeletal remains of cars, homes, and offices stood frozen in time, vaporized shadows marking where people had huddled in vain against the apocalypse. Nothing stirred amongst the wasteland of ash and radiation. An eerie silence pervaded, heavy with the ghosts of the billions lost. Yet, deep within the iron heart of the planet, shielded in bunkers miles beneath the ruined surface, hidden pockets of humanity endured. In this cold subterranean realm, the last survivors clawed to existence, safeguarded from the ravages above. In Bunker 117, Eve hunched over a flickering console, fingers flying as she worked to optimize the oxygen scrubbers and propulsion systems. Around her, haggard men, women and children huddled in the metallic chambers carved from the crust of the earth. Drawn faces, hardened by trauma, peered under the harsh fluorescent lights. Once known for her brilliance in bioengineering, Eve now used her gifted mind to maintain the systems vital for survival. Her deft hands, known for their precision in the laboratory, now delicately cleaned wounds and soothed the cries of those still reeling from the loss of everything they knew. She moved amongst them, whispering words of reassurance and resilience. As long as we draw breath, we endure. This is but a trial before our redemption. Have faith. Some lifted their heads at her words, a glimmer of determination flickering in their vacant eyes. Later, in the quiet hum of the midnight hours, Eve retreated to her private quarters. Under the cold LED glow, she carefully lifted a weathered photograph from her pocket. In it, a smiling family stood outside their suburban home, squinting in the bright summer sun. Her fingertips gently traced their faces, pausing on the laughing visage of a young girl. Be strong, my child, she whispered into the empty room. I will find you again among the stars, I swear it. Carefully replacing the photo, Eve straightened her shoulders before returning to her tireless work. The bunker would not run itself, and the survivors needed her steadfast strength. In the dead of night, muffled sobs and shrieks of terror echoed through the bunker as nightmares seized sleeping minds. Eve was there, as she always was, gently shaking them awake and remaining until their breathing calmed. Hush, you're safe. We're all still here, she would intone, her voice rich with compassion. These haunted souls had endured the impossible and lived. As long as they could draw breath, humanity endured. They only needed faith and each other to kindle the faint embers of hope in their hearts. Eve held that hope close, letting it warm her soul and whisper of redemption beyond this burnt and barren earth. As long as she could draw breath, she would fan those embers, keeping the flame of the human spirit alive until it could rise renewed, like a phoenix from ash. Years slipped by in the windowless confines of the bunker, an endless procession of monotonous days and nights. The people moved through their routines like ghosts, pale specters performing the motions of life without its spirit. But Eve's hands never stilled, her mind never rested. She poured every ounce of her being into expanding their subterranean shelter, transforming the cramped metal halls into a thriving underground settlement. Hydroponic farms spread lush greenery under simulated sunlight, 
bearing bountiful genetically engineered crops to nourish their growing numbers. Her technical genius constructed compact reactors to power their flourishing workshops and factories. Through it all, her voice never wavered as she spoke of their resilience. We are the masters of our fate, she would proclaim. Humanity bends but never breaks. We will forge our redemption with these hands, see it with these eyes, have faith. And seeing the flicker of hope in their faces, Eve allowed herself to hope as well. On a rare rest day, Eve wandered through the lively market sector, vibrant with chatter and commerce. Children darted between stalls, grinning and laughing as they enjoyed precious moments of play. She paused to take in the scene, this microcosm of life they had built beneath the wasteland surface. Catching a glimpse of her tired eyes in a reflective panel, Eve pondered the years gone by. Age had crept upon her, stealing away youth, but it could not dim the determined fire within. She had led these people through despair into the light of thriving, just as she had promised all those years ago. Her child, her darling Sarah, was still lost to her, but in these people she saw her legacy enduring. A low rumble in the earth jolted Eve from her thoughts. Seismic activity was common, but this felt different, more sustained. The engineers exchanged nervous glances as the tremors continued. Eve hurried to the control room where screens displayed the source, a disturbance on the surface unlike any before. Her curiosity peaked, Eve made a decision. Later, garbed in heavy protective suits, Eve led a team of scientists upward through the airlocks. They rose toward the surface, through the layers of engineering shielding the bunker from a hostile outside world. With a hiss of depressurization, the final blast doors opened. Eve stepped forward, boots sinking into ash and dirt. Her eyes widened in her helmet, struggling to comprehend the impossible vista. Where she expected wasteland, there was life, riotous, abundant life, halfway reclaiming the land from the ravages of apocalypse. It was a lush jungle paradise set amidst urban ruins. Woody vines draped shattered buildings in emerald curtains. Wildflowers pushed up through cracks in buckled concrete. Trees stretched for the sky, dappling the earth in pools of vibrant color. Movement drew Eve's stunned gaze. Humanoid figures, clad in strange suits woven from plant fiber. They were tending the trees, coaxing fruit from the overflowing bushes. One turned, noticed the humans, and froze. For a moment, the two groups regarded each other in awe. Then the figure raised a hand in greeting. Eve approached cautiously, voice trembling as her translator broadcast, I am Eve. We come in peace. The being responded in a melodic language translated as, We are the Orthus. Your arrival is fortuitous. Eve learned they were explorers stranded here by cosmic misfortune. They possessed advanced biological technology, allowing them to terraform even this ravaged wasteland. In return, Eve told the tale of mankind's survival beneath the surface. Your species is formidable beyond measure, the Orthus marveled. You have transcended extinction through resilience and fortitude. Truly, you have become phoenixes rising from the ashes. Eve replied, Our people have walked through the darkest valley and emerged to see the sun again. With allies like you, our future shines bright. As Eve and the Orthus leader clasped hands in friendship, Eve felt the last lingering ashes of despair blow away on the wind. Life had returned more wondrous than ever. Their long trial was ending at last. In the weeks after first contact, the Orthus and humans worked in harmony to spur the rebirth of the surface world. Each day, teams emerged from the bunker to the feast for the senses above. The Orthus shared their knowledge freely, teaching the humans their songs to encourage growth and heal the lingering radiation burns on the land. Soon, lush, engineered jungles carpeted the ruins of old cities, cloaking the scars of war in verdant life. Groves of fruit trees, 
their bounty plump and sweet from genetic enrichment, drew delighted children who gorged themselves happily. Illumination mosses and vines lit the nights with their bioluminescent glow, echoing with the chirps of new species the Orthus were carefully introducing. Over time, the survivors emerged from their bunker permanently, building a city of light and life amidst the rejuvenated landscape. Sleek buildings flowed organically from the mountains, honoring the curves of nature while combining the best of human and Orthus knowledge. Advanced greenhouses nurtured a wealth of crops using recycled water and integrated solar technology. Libraries housed carefully preserved stacks of human literature alongside Orthus philosophy. Schools taught human and Orthus children side by side, the next generation of this blended society. On the anniversary of First Contact, the United Peoples held an enormous celebration beneath the silver boughs of a colossal metal tree engineered to sustain its own ecosystem. There was music, food, and joyous connection. Eve delivered a speech to the enraptured crowd. On the darkest of days, when humanity's flame had almost gone out, when survival seemed all we could hope for, we never stopped dreaming of more, of redemption and rebirth. Now our people stand together in this place of life we have cultivated. The sea of faces shone, human and orthus alike, as Eve continued. We have transcended survival. We have found thriving. We have created a new world side by side with those who we once saw as alien. Our shared hope made this possible. Let it always light the way forward. After thunderous applause, Eve found herself surrounded by eager listeners. Tell us about your journey, they clamored. What was it like in the beginning? Eve considered where to begin. So much had changed from those early desperate days in the bunker, but finally she knew. It began with a young scientist, tasked with saving the last remnants of humanity. She started. The words flowed memories rising easily to paint a picture of those bleak times. But she also spoke of hope, of a woman's fierce determination in the darkness before dawn, of whispered promises to lead her people into the light, of a relentless belief that from ashes, humanity could rise renewed, like a phoenix. The city around them stood as testament to that defiant hope. The people here now were its inheritors, Eve wove the tale long into the night, and the next day, when crowds eagerly gathered again, she continued, because it was a story worth telling, of the boundless resilience of the human spirit, of defiant hope kindling rebirth, of life blossoming from even the darkest of ashes. This was the story Eve told, the story she had lived. Her legacy would be sustaining that hope, nurturing that spark of life until it could shine like a beacon, until humanity could spread its wings, reborn and joyous, and finally soar, 